Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about why the stock market has officially entered a bear market, particularly the stock market benchmark, which we are going to use as the S&P 500. Then we're also going to discuss how you can stop your portfolio from losing money and the top 10 best stocks to buy during a bear market and whether or not a recession is actually going to come after this bear market. So for more videos like this one, remember to go and smash that like button but right now, comment your thoughts down below, subscribe if you are new, and without further ado, let's jump right into today's stories. So, the S&P 500 index, which is a fantastic stock market benchmark, has lost around 20% of its value year to date, so it has officially entered into a bear market. Now, professionals think that the S&P 500 benchmark, which would be things such as SPY or VOO, my personal favorite is VOO between those two ETFs, is going to fall around 8 to 23% more from this already 20% loss. So in total, the stock market benchmark could fall around 43% or it could fall around 28% depending on which analyst is actually correct. However, regardless about which analyst or professional is actually correct about this bear market, I'm going to be dollar cost averaging into the VOO ETF while the stock market is crashing because right now is literally the best time to invest, but this would not be a good time to invest on any margin. So any aggressive risky growth stocks are not going to be very good investments. However, on the other hand, ETFs that track any index such as QQQ or VTI or even VOO, those are going to be much safer investments for you to invest into every two weeks while the stock market is falling. And then when it inevitably bounces back, it's going to make you very wealthy. So why has the S&P 500 benchmark for the overall stock market been falling? Well, first off, no surprise, it's because of the rising recession fears in the United States. So this is why investors are liquidating their stocks and moving their money over to the bond market. Another reason why they're doing this is because as interest rates are increasing, this is going to negatively impact growth stocks in particular. So investors are liquidating growth stocks and investing into blue chip stocks, ETFs that track indices or value stocks. Also, dividend stocks are going to really show their worth right now, especially if you have a drip investing on where your brokerage is going to be investing those dividends back into the stock. And speaking of brokerage accounts, Webull, which is a brokerage similar to Robinhood, is doing a a fantastic deal right now where if you invest $100 into any stock of your choice, I personally would invest into the ETF VOO during this time. So if you invest $100, you're going to receive six free stocks. If you want more information on that, you can go and click the link down in the description. On top of that, there's going to be a chance for you to win $12,000. So if you sign up, invest $100, not only are you going to receive six free stocks, but you're also going to be entered in to win $12,000. But now back to the video. The S&P 500 as of today has dropped around 2%, which is very unlike an index to do. Normally, index do not swing by whole percentage points very often, but in the last few years, various indices have been very volatile, which is why this author rightfully points out that this is the first bear market that we've officially entered into post-2020. They go on to say that stocks are still liberally priced and the psychology that drove them upward for a decade has turned negative because we have been in a fantastic bull run over the past decade, but now it seems that things are catching back up to us, aside from the market crash in 2020. He goes on to say that the average bear market lasts a year. This downturn has run for only one third of that, so it probably has more downside room to run, albeit punctuated by interim rallies." End quote. So what he's saying here is basically, George Ball, who is the chairman at investment firm Sanders Morris Harris, is saying that we are only one third through this official bear market. And although we are going to see some dead cat bounces and some rallies in the intermediate times, it overall is going to be a negative trend. And the S&P 500 falling 20% is just the beginning, as you can see from this chart on screen. Apart from the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which is another index, has fallen by around 538 points or 1.7% today. On top of that, the NASDAQ Composite, which normally has a low 
load of technology growth stocks fell by around 2.8%. So it actually has lost 31% of its value since its highs. In the last week, the Dow Jones has fallen by around 4% and it entered into its first eight week losing streak since 1923. Likewise, the S&P 500 is down 5% in a single week, which is absolutely crazy because on average, the S&P 500 returns give or take around 8 to 10% each year. On the other hand, we have the NASDAQ, which has fallen more than both of them because they fell by around 6% just in the last week. And we can see very large companies falling by very large percentage points, particularly the three I want to highlight would be Etsy, PayPal, and Netflix, whose ticker symbols are on screen right now. And Etsy has dropped in value by around 75.4%, PayPal has lost 74.6% of its value, and Netflix has lost around 74.1% of its value from their 52-week high, which is absolutely insane. So clearly right now is actually not a time to be scared, it's actually a time to be greedy. Now when I say greedy, I mean be smart and dollar cost average into very well-known indices or ETFs and blue chip stocks, especially if they have a dividend. The bear market in the United States that we are in right now is stemming from the inflationary pressure as well as the rising interest rates that the Federal Reserve is trying to implement to get inflation under control. To add more gasoline to the fire, we see major blue chip stocks such as Walmart and Target have not had very good quarterly reports, which means that the rising inflation and interest rates are really hitting consumers very hard, and thus it's making these businesses less profitable and bring in less revenue, or at least not at the particular growth rate or earnings rate that investors want to see. We also see other companies such as DocuSign, Lucid Group, and Zscaler falling by giant percentage points such as for DocuSign, ticker symbol DOCU fell by around 76.55%, Lucid Group fell by around 69.25%, and Zscaler fell by around 64.44%, which is insane. Also, bank stocks are also on the decline, which is somewhat surprising, including JP Morgan Chase, which dropped by around 1% today, and Bank of America fell by around 2% today. Now, during times of high interest rates, I personally like to buy banking stocks because banks banks won't be hit as hard as other companies, especially if we look at the data from past bear markets, especially during times of rising interest rates, because these banks get to increase the amount of interest that they charge on loans, which offsets the rising interest rates to some degree. So they actually have somewhat of a hedge during a rising interest rate environment. However, this is not added to the bullish take on the overall market to where Deutsche Bank actually said the S&P 500 could fall to 3,000 which means that if a recession is imminent, that means that the S&P 500 could drop by another 23%. Now, in my personal opinion, I would think that was good news because I'm going to continuously invest every two weeks into ticker symbol VOO. The S&P 500 has been considered the most accurate measurement of the overall stock market's performance. Another really good ETF that I would encourage you to look into would be ticker symbol VTI. During times like this, ETFs such as VOO and VTI are really going to shine, especially if you're going to dollar cost average into them when everyone is fearful, because when everyone's fearful, that's when we want to be greedy and vice versa. Also, this CNN business article and author points out that only one bear market in the last 50 years was actually not accompanied by a recession, which is very interesting. So a Charles Schwab analyst actually commented about this and said, For the majority of the bull market since the March 2020 low, investors have had reasons to buy the dips, and given this slowdown is looking more natural and protracted. There is a heightened degree of fear and not knowing where to hide. I don't think that discomfort leaves us anytime soon, especially given the fact that monetary and fiscal policy are no longer at investors' backs. Clearly, he's talking about the Fed changing their own overall fiscal policies so inflation doesn't get out of control. This is echoed by Morgan Stanley, which basically predicts a 27% chance of a recession taking place over the next 12 months. 
which is higher than their previous recession projection of only 22%, so they have actually increased that by a margin of 5%. The article also points out that since World War II, the S&P 500 has entered into around 17 bear markets, where the average drop is around 30%, and as of right now, the S&P 500 year-to-date has lost around 20% of its value. So clearly, the index could lose another 10%, which is very close to the projections that we saw earlier, another 8%, would put it at around 28 or it could go all the way as high as 43 percent for their overall losses now if the stock market ends up going into a full-on recession what should we be buying well that's an excellent question in my personal opinion remember this is not financial advice that i would start buying blue chip stocks such as berkshire hathaway the reason is because berkshire hathaway is an absolute behemoth of a company and the reason why this is a buying opportunity is because warren buffett has successfully navigated crashes and bear markets very successfully. Just listen to this. Berkshire Hathaway's compound annual growth rate, or CAGR, since 1965 is around 20% according to Argus Research. That is almost two times higher than the return rate of the S&P 500, which returns around 10.5%. So clearly, from 1965, he's actually outsmarting the overall index, which is extremely hard to do, and I would say only around 1% of the investors could probably do this successfully. I also want to highlight CVS, which is a good dividend stock in the health sector, and we'll talk about more about why I like the health sector during recessions and bear markets in just a moment. But this is going to be a sector of safe haven stocks, because everyone's going to need health care, regardless of what the economy or the stock market is doing, and CVS is very well known for their pharmaceutical chain as well as their health insurance, and they also have a decent dividend of around a 2.1% yield, which which is going to be very good. Another company that I would point out would be either McDonald's or Wendy's would be very good as well. Likewise, Coca-Cola is a fantastic blue chip stock that offers a very impressive dividend of around 2.6% according to this article, where the ticker symbol is KO. This is going to be a very defensive company because it's involved in the consumer staples sector, which means that regardless about what happens, people are still going to be buying Coca-Cola products. They also have a very strong history of increasing their overall dividend, which makes them a dividend aristocrat because they have increased their dividend year over year regardless of bear market recession or crash for 60 years in a row. And like I said earlier, if you have drip investing on and you're going to use your dividends to reinvest back into this company so your next dividend is even greater, that is going to be fantastic because it's going to be used to dollar cost average your average price during a recession, especially if the stock price continues to fall. Likewise, we're going to talk about another company which has a giant dividend yield of around 3.5%, which is ABV, ticker symbol ABBV, and this is another pharmaceutical giant that has relatively low volatility, but yet they are a dividend aristocrat, which means that they do increase their dividend year over year, which is fantastic news. Another company I want to point out, mainly over in the health sector, is going to be Medtronic, which has a dividend yield of around 2.4%, according to this article. Dividends are going to provide you cash flow, and it's going to allow you to keep investing into these stocks to build these dividends over the long term, so not only are you going to get passive income from this, but you can use these to reinvest into the stock to increase your dividend year over year. And this is why analysts are recommending blue chip stocks, dividend growth stocks, and stocks with very low volatility, so they can beat overall market returns from the S&P 500, which is going to act very volatile over the next couple of months. Our next company is going to be a defense contractor named General Dynamics, which also has a pretty good dividend yield of 2.1%, and the reason for this is these are actually fantastic companies that have dependable revenue sources from either other government contractors or the U.S. government. They have a dependable dividend, and according to analysts, this is going to be one of the better stocks to buy, especially if war breaks out across the globe. Defensive contractor stocks are absolutely going to ignite because this is the time where they really shine. I'm also going to point out other companies, such as Iron Mountain, which has a very impressive dividend yield of around 4.6% because they are a REIT, which is a real estate investment trust. So these are required required to give out a large percentage of the overall revenue and income they make to their shareholders. It has good growth and low volatility, which is a clear buying opportunity during a stock market that is currently in their bearish mode. Other stocks I'm going to point out that have a pretty good dividend yield of around 2.1% is ticker symbol MDLZ, which is one of the best stocks considering inflation, because they have food products which people are going to be forced to buy regardless of inflation, which would include Oreo 
milk cookies, Milka chocolates, and Philadelphia cream cheese if you're familiar with any of those products. So clearly, customers are going to be forced to continuously buy healthcare products. The government is still going to be buying defensive contractors to innovate our overall technology to defend against any external threats, and consumers are also going to continue to buy groceries. So those are going to be the three main segments that we want to really nail down here. Another one would be insurance companies. Now, I do want to highlight United Healthcare because United Health Group, which offers United Healthcare, ticker symbol UNH, is going to be absolutely fantastic to buy right now. It's a fantastic growth stock and it has a decent dividend yield. So if you're not really crazy about dividends and you want more growth stocks to buy during a stock bear market, then clearly United is going to be one of your top picks as well as T-Mobile, which is another solid overall company. But I would love to hear your thoughts down below about any of these companies, what you are doing to lower your risk during this time of market volatility. And for more videos like this one, remember to go and smash that like button right now, comment your thoughts down below, subscribe if you are new, and I will see you in the next YT video.